So you want to get a developer job or a better developer job and you're thinking what programming language or framework or tool additionally I need to learn to impress the employer. What if I told you this is not the correct way of thinking? So this week I had two separate conversations which led me to shoot this video. One story was from the guy asking me like, I have this and that experience with Laravel, I need to learn something like Vue.js or maybe Python or maybe C++, like what can I learn additionally to get jobs or to apply for freelance work? And another conversation was from someone transitioning from non-developer job from like Mar marketing and their own startup to back to programming basically and they were asking what are the modern sexy programming languages in 2025 for them to get back to the market to the opportunities for employment and both people were focused on technology which is of course the primary reason someone would hire you to well do the job but the set of your skills the list of your skills the number of your skills is not the only reason or sometimes not even the primary reason for employer to choose you over other candidates. So let's simplify that there are two stages for getting the job. First, to get to the interview, basically to get noticed. And then the second stage is the interview itself to impress during the interview. And for that, you need totally different skills than programming. It's about presentation, communication, and wait for it, sales. Yep, I know how we all hate those sleazy salesmen trying to pitch us something in the malls or on the street or something. No, I'm not talking about those sales guys. But I want to emphasize is that if you're thinking that you need more programming languages to get opportunity for jobs, even before you try to send the CV, then it's the wrong way of thinking in my opinion. So to the person who asked me what programming languages should I learn to get freelance projects, I asked him back, have you tried to send at least one pitch to one project? And they said no. And then I asked deeper, so do you have any feedback from potential customers or employers that you lack something in your CV or in your set of skills? And they said no, I don't have any real feedback. So what I'm trying to say is that you shouldn't ask people like me or someone else on Twitter or elsewhere what programming language is the best or what should you learn. You basically want to get any feedback from your real environment. So try to send a CV, try to pitch your services on freelance job board or in your local community. And then based on feedback or based on analyzing what those requirements are, you would notice the gaps in your knowledge and then you go back and learn something that you actually would need for specific kinds of jobs. But the deeper you get into the learning process of trying to learn another programming language framework or tool, the further you get from actually trying to get the job. Now, of course, I'm not saying that you need to send the CV if you don't have the skills. Of course, there should be bare minimum and reasonable amount of skills that you need to be confident that you can get the job done. But if you want to add something extra, which may not be the part of the jobs, I would classify that as a part of procrastination. In other words, if you ask me how to get the job, it's done by trying to get a job not by trying to learn more coding. And then I'm often asked how to get clients, like literally people expect me to provide some kind of script or some magic wand or some scenario that is guaranteed to bring them clients. So that's not how it works, unfortunately, because every situation is different. I don't know what jobs are you applying for or what projects or what clients what geographical area, there may be cultural differences, but I want to still give you something useful. So here's kind of a guideline. Try to apply for a job or for a project after analyzing the specific job or a project and try to pitch your services in the way that would be the best fit for the client reading your CV or your letter or email or whatever, that they would feel that you're a good fit they would sense that you have put extra effort into writing personal email to them, not just sending general CV to hundreds of jobs. So the more personal your application is applying to how you can be really useful for that particular case, the better are your chances. But of course, as I said, there are multiple more factors to get to the interview. But what I want to emphasize that it's not about programming skills alone.
And then during the second phase, when you do get into interview, then it's even more about communication skills. Then you're tested not only on the technical skills, which may be just a part of your interview as a task or take home assignment or something like that. Then you get tested on things like, can you work in a team? Are you a good team player? Are you a good communicator? Which means if you aren't, then teammates would struggle to get along with you in general. It's not about the code anymore. And then again, during the interview, you have to be confident in presenting yourself because people like to work with other people who are confident they can get stuff done. These rules are outside of coding world, development world. This is general human condition, I would say. So yeah, to recap to anyone who was thinking what to learn extra, instead, I would suggest to learn something about sales, communication, presentation of your skills and try to send the CV, the applications, and then based on feedback, iterate on what did you miss in your presentation or what skills you may lack from technical side. I hope this advice is helpful. I will continue shooting these videos from my office every Friday on this channel. So subscribe to the channel to not miss any of them and see you guys in other videos.